Hi everyone, welcome back to Brookdale Farm. It's a beautiful sunny day here today. Uh, everything's growing amazingly well. Um, and it's going to be hay cutting in about another three weeks time. Now we don't cut much hay, uh, just a little bit for our cattle. Uh, and we're going to be using the Chamberlain to pull the hay mower. Uh, so I thought I might just take the opportunity today to talk about the dual wheels on it. Um, why do we have the dual wheels? During seeding, we want the extra traction and the extra flotation that doubling the, uh, the um, amount of tyre on the ground gives us. It's almost like giving it four-wheel drive. This is only a two-wheel drive tractor. If we put two extra wheels on the back, we get four-wheel drive. You will see some big four-wheel drive tractors have dual wheels on the front as well, just to give them even more traction. Now, on this particular tractor, the inner wheels are filled with water uh, to about uh, two-thirds of the way up. Now, this gives it a bit more weight and a bit of extra traction. These outer wheels I don't fill with water because I take them off uh, when I don't need them. So for hay cutting, we're going to take the dual wheels off and just run with the inner singles. Uh, now, one of the other advantages of having dual wheels and spreading the load is it reduces ground compaction. It doubles the depth that your ground compaction goes to, but it halves the, the weight per square inch on the ground. So it... Um, it reduces how much compaction, soil compaction you actually get. This is really important, particularly when the soil is wet. When it is dry, it doesn't compact as much. Um, but so during seeding, when it is quite wet, and during fertilizer spreading as well, when it can also be quite wet, uh, the soil compaction can be quite a big issue. Uh, so we're going to take the, the two outer wheels off now, and I'll just uh, run you through how we do it. The first, so the first thing I normally do when I'm taking these wheels off is drive the tractor, the inner wheel, up onto a block of wood that's about two inches thick. This just takes the weight off the outer wheel and makes it a bit easier to get on and off. So I'm just going to move the tractor now and uh, I'll show you how we get them off. So if we have a look on the inside of this wheel here, We've got this long extension tube uh, that goes all the way into the inner wheel and we've got this row of nuts round the inside of it. We need to undo these uh, and then we can take this extension tube and the outer wheel off. I'll just bring you around the side here and show you in between the two wheels you can see the extension tube here. This is a genuine Chamberlain extension tube. This tractor of mine originally didn't have dual wheels fitted so I've I've put them on but they did come out as an optional extra uh, with these tubes here okay so I have loosened these off already with before I put it up on the uh, on the block of wood um, now we just need to undo them um, and these are these are quite long nuts uh, to give a bit of extra um, uh, thread in them because they've got a fair bit of load on them. Also, uh, they've got a chamfer on one end that fits down into the chamfer on the, on the wheel and this just helps to align it um, and keep it central. Now that we have undone all the nuts in the middle, it is simply a job of wriggling the wheel off. The piece of wood I have it parked on, at the inner wheel parked on at the moment, may not be quite big enough. Uh, one of the other tools that is really useful when you're doing this job is the crowbar. 
uh, just to help nudge the tyre along on the ground and wriggle it off. Now these wheels are really heavy, so it's very important to make sure you don't drop it on yourself. Now that we've got the wheel off, I'll uh, we can have a look at the original wheel that was on here um, and these are the studs that the um, the extension bolts onto now because this tractor didn't originally have dual wheels on it for some reason in the factory they only drilled four of these holes uh, and the other four were never drilled and tapped so I had to drill them when I uh, first got the dual wheels which was a bit of a bit of a nuisance trying to get them all exactly straight and if you look closely you can see a couple of them I didn't quite get straight so this is the extension tube now we've got it off you can see that it's fairly basic it's a flat plate here with holes in it welded onto a piece of tube with another flat plate down that end um, with the holes for the outer wheel on it uh, Chamberlain made all their parts or most of their parts themselves they did buy in some bits uh, and a lot of the stuff is fabricated in a fairly basic manner um, with minimal castings and things like that the outer wheel on the other side of the tractor here is a little bit different to the first side that we looked at when I was looking around for a set of dual wheels for this I could only find one one side so I got the inner and the outer off a wrecked tractor that were both from the same side. So I couldn't find another extension tube for it, so I've made this one up. I welded, welded this flange onto the rim um, and made up this frame that sits inside it here. So I'll take the tire off, take the outer wheel off and I'll show you the frame this one is the same there's eight bolts but they're a bit easier to get to on this one they're right around the outside uh, and then we've got some long threaded rod that goes back to the original wheel so I'll undo these and uh, get this outer tire off and uh, we'll uh, have a look at the frame inside So we'll come in and have a closer look at the frame. It's a very basic frame. It's three quarter inch uh, water pipe and 10 by 50 flat bar welded together in a zigzag pattern. I copied this from one that I had seen that another old farmer had made up um, for their, they actually had a triple, three tractors joined together, all with dual wheels on it. And they put the jewels on like this. So this frame now just slides off the bolts. Um, we've got long all thread bolts in here. Now, these, these tractors have a split rim on them. So if you undo all of these bolts around here, this outer section of the rim comes off uh, to allow you to change the tire. So we have to be very careful taking these out. I do one at a time, take out the all thread and put in the bolt, put the bolt back in. I've never had any problems doing it like that. But if we left the tire pumped up and took all these bolts out, chances are this outer rim would come out, would jump out and hit us in the face and probably do us some serious damage. So we have to be very careful when we're doing this. 
The other thing, whenever I'm doing a project or doing something like this, the bolts that are going back in, I always like to put a bit of anti-seize on them. This is um, this is a nickel anti-seize. The copper anti-seize works really well too. This just means you can get it, get them back out again much more easily. And a bit of whatever um, penetrating oil you happen to have in your shed um, on them as well. This just helps them go in, come back out again next year when I need to put the jewel wheels back on. So there we have it, the jewel wheels are off uh, and uh, all the, the short bolts are back in the wheel. Here's the the, the extension frame. Um, so why do we bother taking the jewel wheels off? Um, the, it makes the tractor a lot wider with the jewel wheels on, it makes it harder to get through gateways in and out of the shed with it. Um, when you're cutting hay you tend to run over a lot more of the hay, even though your hay mower is swung out away from the tractor, the jewel wheels stick out so far that you run away and run over and wreck some of your hay. Um, it uses less fuel when you take the jewels off. Not by much, and this isn't particularly, uh, I don't use that much fuel that it makes that much difference, but every little bit at the moment helps. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something from this. And I hope to see you again next time. Thanks. Bye.